Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Bay Area Case Studies Virtual College Fair powered by StriveScan. We're excited that you've decided to join us tonight. Um, as this is a webinar, our presenters cannot see you, nor can they hear you, but they would love to hear from you. So please use the Q&A button to ask your questions of any of our presenters at any time. If you would like, you can sign up for additional sessions. There is one additional block of sessions after this. But if there are schools that you can't get to tonight or that you just like to review, know that all of the sessions are being recorded and the recordings are available at strivescan.com backslash B-A-C-S. Today's webinar is in a six by six format, which means that each of our six institutions will have six minutes to present. So without any further ado, I'd like to welcome our presenter from Williams College. I can see your screen, you just need to unmute. Great, can you hear me now? I sure can, yep. Okay, terrific. Um, hi everybody, my name is Sol Gila. I'm the Director of Admission at Williams College and super excited to be here. Um, I first wanna start out by giving you a sense of, of Williams as a community. Uh, we're located in the Northwestern corner of Massachusetts um, and we're a small liberal arts college, college but with uh, tremendous resources um, that allow our students to uh, explore deeply and also to, to learn in a setting that is incredibly supportive. Um, talking a little bit about academics here, um, we have small classes throughout the curriculum and um, our faculty uh, get to know students really deeply both in and out of the classroom. We've structured our curriculum in a way that allows for deep exploration in your major, uh, but also uh, a breadth across the curriculum. Um, and so nearly 40% of our students will double major. If you're someone who has a lot of different academic interests, our curriculum will really allow you to explore uh, all the many interests that you have. Um, just to give you a little bit of a sense of something that is um, we think truly unique at Williams, uh, it's the opportunity to take a class with just one other student and a professor in a course called a Williams tutorial. Tutorials are offered in every academic discipline. Um, they're taught by faculty for first year students all the way through your second, third and fourth year at Williams, um, although entirely optional, many of our students will take advantage of tutorials. Um, and our students have said that it's an incredibly uh, unique way to learn because uh, how it's structured is you and a partner take turns each week uh, presenting independent work that you've, you've produced um, or uh, delivering a critique of your partner's work. So it's a, it's a really intensive experience. Um, it's also one where you'll uh, become an expert in a subject area uh, and also be really challenged um, by working very closely with the professor, uh, professor and a peer. Uh, all of our first year students live in uh, communities of about 40 other first year students uh, joined by three or four juniors. It's a built in community. It's a community that's intentionally diverse and reflects the uh, the backgrounds and interests in your first year class. And it's and it's uh, it's a home that you come back to every night after a long day at the library or a busy day with co-curriculars, uh, a community that you belong to uh, and from which you can sort of branch out um, and get to know other people through classes and co-curriculars, um, but certainly the, the home that you, again, come back to every evening. Um, just a few things about admission. Um, there's a lot more detail on the admission website in terms of deadlines and um, just the details of the admission process. Um, but the one thing I wanted to, just the two things I wanted to mention is that uh, our admission process remains truly holistic. So in an unprecedented year like this one where uh, just there have been so many things uh, at school and I'm sure at home that have affected your life and certainly your admission and financial aid process. Um, we will be very, very flexible in understanding uh, what's, what's been going on um, and being responsive to that in our process. And I know that's, that's true at, at all of the colleges represented here. Um, I also wanted to mention that Williams has decided to be test optional uh, for the upcoming admission cycle and then the following one after that. 
And that just truly means that testing is 100% is optional. So if you have it and you're excited to submit it, uh, we're happy to have it and, and use it as part of our holistic review. Um, and if you choose not to submit it, it, you will not be penalized in any way. Um, the last thing I wanted to end on is just um, that uh, we work really hard to make sure Williams is affordable. Um, so please hop on our website uh, to find this little calculator icon. Uh, it'll take you two minutes to finish and it'll give you a sense of whether your family will be eligible for financial aid and if you are, um, then what you might expect in terms of, of the aid. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it over to our next colleague. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is from Davidson College. All right, just pulling my little timer up. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lee Hoffman, and I'm an Associate Dean of Admission here at Davidson in Davidson, North Carolina. So I'm going to start with some quick fast facts and then um, go into more of kind of the type of student that is drawn to Davidson um, and spend a little less time on the nuts and bolts. Um, and we'll give you some links at the end to help you get to know kind of some of those pieces about Davidson. But um, just kind of quick fast facts. Um, as I mentioned, we are in Davidson, North Carolina, about 20 miles from the Charlotte, North Carolina, which is the largest city in the state. Um, if you don't have super great North Carolina geography all the way over here on the far east coast, we're about three hours, three and a half hours in from the ocean and an hour and a half in from the mountains. So Davidson itself is a small college town. We have about 2,000 um, students on campus, all undergraduate, and it is very much that quintessential college town. So you can see photo behind me of kind of our main lawn area, people throwing up hammocks between trees, um, playing frisbee, spending time outside. Um, it very much has that cozy family feel to it. Um, students can walk across campus in about five to 10 minutes, fully residential, about 95% of our students living on campus. And, you know, they really engage in the community. So they go into the town of Davidson often to volunteer, to eat. Um, you know, it's the type of space that has local coffee shops, restaurants. Um, the biggest news on campus today has been the fact that one of the kind of go-to restaurants in the region that's owned by a local family is opening up. They very um, have a very famous milk bread um, that is very tasty and they are opening up a milk bread donut shop so students and anybody in town is very excited about that but it's that kind of place right um you know people you get excited about those types of things there's that connection there um we attract students who want to be challenged academically. So if you are that student who wants to really engage with in and out of class, your wheels are turning, you want to have those conversations. It sounds great to have a cup of coffee with a professor or a group of students after class and keep that conversation going or ask the professor questions. Um, I talk a lot about Davidson being in a really incredible place where you get fantastic advising from your professors and from your actual advisor, but the unofficial advising that happens in those conversations where internships or opportunities to help write a book or opportunities to, you know, study abroad in a place that you never expected to happen because of those conversations and people taking time to get to know you as a student, but as a person and as a lifelong learner. So really setting you up to have those skills, do those things that are going to serve you no matter what you do when you leave Davidson. Um, you know, we are a liberal arts institution, incredibly flexible with our curriculum. We do have distribution requirements, we call them ways of knowing here, um, and they allow students to take courses in different areas over the course of their entire four years to kind of check those off. A lot of students find that they take those without even knowing it or trying, um, and you don't have to declare your major to the end of sophomore year. So similar to a lot of other liberal arts places, you get that flexible curriculum, space to explore, you can design your own major, um, but ultimately we care more about developing students as individuals, as humans who are going to do good and actually great things when they leave Davidson, um, to be able to think creatively to problem solve all of those pieces, um, less so than those specific pieces. We hope you find a major that excites you, but that's less of the focus here and more on the individual. Um, we attract students who really lead with that sense of integrity. A lot of places have honor codes. Davidson really takes theirs to another level. So pre-COVID and people kind of working at home by themselves, our students have been taking exams and finals on their own time in their own space. Um, so they've had self-scheduled finals, unproctored exams, take-home exams, a lot of trust amongst professors and students already existed um, even before this time. So our students have had a really, I won't say easy time, but academically probably more so than others um, 
we're really well suited to head into this past year and work kind of individually and do those things. Um, you can leave your stuff laying around too. Our police chief does not encourage you to do that, but it is something you can do on campus. So we attract students that really lead with that sense of integrity, expect that of others around them, and then also look outside themselves and say, how can I help? What can I do? So my favorite thing about Davidson students is the fact that almost all of them do service in some form or fashion, whether that's um, adopting a local couple, as we have a big adopter grandparent program in Davidson, or mentoring local elementary or um, middle school students, and even just changing Davidson's campus. I've been on campus for six years and I've watched even the space and the programs physically change on campus because students have come to campus and said, I want this to be better or this is not serving my community well. I think we should do this. And not everything gets to change, but the fact that students have that agency and that voice and they're heard. Um, and we have faculty and staff and our president does a great job of getting to know students to the point where she invites every single student by the time they graduate to have a meal with her. Um, students are in a place where they get to make it a better place before they leave if they want to. And that's not true in every space. And part of it is just our size. Um, but I think also, again, the community the expectation that we bring students to campus that care, that want to make things better. Um, we check all the boxes for opportunities for study abroad, internships, research. Um, I will say, going back to the undergraduate piece, because we don't have grad students on campus, our undergraduate research opportunities are really robust. You can check out those kinds of opportunities on our website. Um, we have Division One sports, so pack a big sports punch. About 25% of our students are varsity athletes, so it's really cool to be able to throw on a Davidson shirt, walk across campus, and go to a basketball game, um, but really students are just involved in a bunch of different things. So I'm getting my sign off now. I'll throw some information in the chat to be able to reach out, contact me, find out more about Davidson, but I hope you will continue to explore. Thank you. Excellent. Our next presenter is from Loyola University, Chicago. Hello, good evening. Uh, my name is Emily and I am a regional representative for Loyola Chicago. And what that means is that I live here in the Bay Area. And in normal times, that's super helpful because I can easily attend events like this in person and meet with you one on one. Um, and and um, I also read applications from uh, Western states. Uh, during these times, it's all on Zoom, but hopefully I, I will be there again soon in person uh, to see you. Uh, these this is just a snapshot in the numbers of who we are. Um, we are a very diverse campus. We have just over 12,000 undergraduate students, so we are a pretty solid sized, mid, mid sized university. Um, we are a Catholic university. Uh, so we have a lot of services for Catholic students. We are a Jesuit university. So what that means, um, there's two things uh, I'll, I'll share with you tonight about being a Jesuit university. Um, first is that we care for a student's mind, body, and spirit. We kind of see a student as encompassing those three things and all of those need to be healthy in order for a student to be cared for. Um, in addition, we are a school that focuses on social justice. So what that means is that we offer lots of opportunities for students to get involved at Loyal of Chicago and in the community and even outside of the Chicagoland area, uh, students are doing a lot at Loyola Chicago. Um, that is what we offer and therefore that's uh, the, the people that we attract, the students that we attract are students that care about that. They're students that want to do something in their community, they, they want to give back and, and we work with students very closely to do that. Although we are a, a Catholic university, we are Jesuit so all students are welcome uh, and that is also a pillar of a Jesuit university. Um, we have many students that are coming from other faith backgrounds. Uh, one of the cool spaces on our campus is, is our Hall of Religions. And we have one of the largest uh, student-run mosques. We have a Punjab prayer center, a kosher kitchen. It offers a space for students from lots of different religious backgrounds to gather and worship. And if you are coming from a non-faith background, you will also find your community and you will feel welcomed. Um, we have two centers abroad. Our students study abroad and we've um, been abroad for many years having two uh, centers, one in Vietnam and one in Italy, in Rome, Italy. Um, so those are little Loyolas where students can go and study. Um, but there are over 150 programs that, that we work with, that students study abroad with. Um, and that's one of the questions I often hear students ask is, is about study abroad. So it's definitely something you can do. We are a residential campus. Students will live in, the, in Chicago uh, on one of our campuses. I'll talk about that a little bit more um, for their first two years. 
And then it's up to you in your last two years. You can stay on campus or you could live in another cool neighborhood in Chicago. We have all 50 states represented. Um, it's very likely you'll have somebody, um, you know, maybe your roommate will be from California or somebody on your floor will be because it's our second represented state um, at uh, Loyola Chicago. We've got lots of students from the West Coast. We've got two campuses in Chicago, which also makes us unique. I have a cat in on my lap, so sorry. Um, the joys of, of Zoom work, lots of apologies for pets these days. Um, so we have two campuses in Chicago. One, the Lakeshore campus is right on the shores of Lake Michigan, and it's just a gorgeous setting. It really feels like a traditional campus when you're walking across it, and that, that's really unique to have in Chicago in such a big city. Um, and this is kind of the main uh, hub of life at Loyola Chicago in terms of our sporting events take place here at the Lakeshore campus. The majority of our students live there. Um, you can see it has lots of green space and, and it, it just has a wonderful sense of nature having the, uh, the lake located, being located right on the lake. The second campus we have, the Lakeshore, the Water Tower campus, is an urban campus. And this is six high-rise buildings that are spread across three different city blocks um, and uh, house some of our professional programs like our business school and our school of communication, our law school is down there. Um, and it's really awesome to have these two campuses in the city. Our students love having the opportunity to uh, study at both an urban campus and a traditional uh, uh, setting right in the city. Chicago is a great city to study in. We've got great public transportation and um, it, it's just about the same size as New York, but has a whole lot fewer people. And to me, I love that because I love the green space and I love the nature that Chicago has, but I also absolutely love all of the things that it has uh, being such a, a great cosmopolitan city. Um, these are the eight different schools that we have programs um, at, at, under at Loyola Chicago. And um, we offer over 80 different majors. So being the size we are, it's really nice because you can come in as an undecided student. You can choose your major later. If you come in uh, with one major, there's a lot of flexibility between schools or to um, major, to double major between schools as well, or to take on a minor. Um, the only exception, the only direct entry program we have, meaning that you need to apply for it right up front is our nursing program, our direct entry nursing program. Um, outside of that, you can uh, really, you can change programs. You can, there's a lot of flexibility. Um, we are, uh, you know, solid mid-sized university, but we have very small class sizes, averaging 26 students. So you're not going to um, be in large, huge classes. We do have some that are 70 to 80 students, but it's very small uh, uh, feeling campus, you know, individualized attention here at Loyola Chicago. Um, this is just a snapshot of applying. The only important date uh, is, is um, the application comes out August 1st. I'll throw up a little uh, information into the chat for you. I will put some things that you can grab from there. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Our next presenter is from Washington University in St. Louis. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ellie. I'm an admissions officer at WashU. I'm also an alum, so I actually graduated from the university in 2016 with a major in political science and minors in legal studies and creative writing. And I actually know a lot about what you guys are feeling right now because I grew up in the Bay Area, came to events like the Bay Area case study, so I know exactly where you're applying from. Uh, but that's me. I want to share with you more about WashU. And today I'm going to share the three most important things to remember about the university. Um, and I have some pretty big pictures to share as we go through it. So the number one most important thing to remember about WashU is that we have really flexible academics and a huge focus on interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary study. So as you can see here, our university is split into five undergraduate divisions that are all freshman entry. So students go directly into one of the five. The largest is the College of Arts and Sciences, so it's very defined, the natural sciences, social sciences, and the humanities. And no matter which division students are in at the university, they do take classes in the College of Arts and Sciences. Second largest is the McKelvey School of Engineering, so it's where you find all of our majors that end in the word engineering, as well as computer science. Medium-sized school is the Olin Business School, so it's a freshman entry business program with majors like marketing and finance and accounting. They also have some pretty cool minors in things like business of sports, business of entertainment, social impact. And then our two smallest divisions, which are housed under the Sam Fox School of Design and Visual Arts, 
are the College of Art and the College of Architecture. But I say flexible because even though we have these five divisions, uh, and there are over 90 majors, minors, and programs that are spread across them, uh, and about 1,500 courses that we offer each year, all those classes are open to all of our students, no matter which division they call their home. So we have biomedical engineers who take art classes, or a French major in the College of Arts and Sciences who's getting a minor in architecture, uh, or a political science major who's getting a second major in marketing. So we like to say it doesn't have to make sense to anybody but you what you want to study. Uh, and our students definitely do take that to heart. So about 80% will pursue more than just one major. And that can be like your traditional double major, or it can be majoring and minoring, one major and two minors, two majors and one minor. We have a rule of three, so students can't like quadruple major or do something crazy. But if having multiple interests sounds like you, you definitely would not be alone at WashU, and it's a very supported experience. Uh, and we have a number of programs that kind of in and of themselves are very interdisciplinary. So take, for example, our Beyond Boundaries program, which is actually an opportunity for a student to enter into WashU unaffiliated with one of the five divisions. Now, this program is really geared towards students who have a particular academic interest or focus uh, or like a question that they know can't really be answered from just one vantage point. So think about the big problems we're facing right now, things like climate change, gun violence, uh, you know, global response to a pandemic. Uh, we know that those problems have multiple solutions or that the solutions need to come from multiple angles. And so we want our students to be able to study them in that multifaceted type of way. So folks that are in Beyond Boundaries, they will eventually graduate from one of the five divisions, but in their first few semesters, they're taking some really cool classes that are all about how to design creative solutions and really think outside the box. And we know that no matter where they go after they graduate and what field they end up in, they will have a very niche set of skills to be able to be applied uh, in, in really any industry and help contribute to solving the problems we're going to face tomorrow. So Beyond Boundaries is just one example of how interdisciplinary study really plays itself out at WashU. And that's the number one most important thing to remember. Number two is that we have a really friendly and collaborative campus community, both inside and outside the classroom. So inside the classroom, it means that you're not competing against your fellow classmates. It's not the type of environment where in order for one student to do well, other students have to do poorly. Like instead, the way to succeed is to lean on everybody else. And that is something that is reinforced from the very beginning at WashU. And then outside the classroom, it means that no matter what it is that you do or that you're involved in, you have people that are going to be there to cheer you on. So we have over 400 student groups on campus, everything from performing arts groups, academic clubs, religious organizations, political organizations, athletic clubs, um, community service and civic engagement are huge on our campus, student government, um, beekeeping club, a butter churning club, we really have it all. And if something isn't already at WashU, it's very easy to start it at WashU. So the list of clubs that we have is always growing. Uh, but like I said, the best part is just the community that you have supporting you. Like when folks ask me what's one word to describe WashU students, it's really hard because everybody's incredibly different. But all of our students are very passionate, both inside and outside the classroom. But beyond that, they're very supportive of other people's passions. And I think that piece is really key when you're talking about a community. Now, the number three most important thing to remember about WashU is St. Louis, the city that we are in. It's part of our name. It's something that we are incredibly proud of. A fun fact, when I was in high school, there's no way I could have pointed out St. Louis on a map. Or honestly, Missouri, if I'm being real. Uh, the middle of the country, it was very foreign to me. Uh, but the city has absolutely captured my heart. Uh, it's kind of the perfect size where it's big enough to have everything that you want in a big city. So it has professional sports teams and cultural attractions and lots of places to go and things to do. Uh, but it's small enough to still feel very community oriented, very easy to navigate. We actually make it even easier to navigate by giving each student a free Metro pass. So you get to ride all the St. Louis public transportation completely for free. And that's the best part, especially because we all know Bay Area public transit can get really expensive and it doesn't go everywhere. So uh, St. Louis Metro is awesome in that way, but there's just so much to explore in the city of St. Louis. It's really the dark horse of my college experience is falling in love with the city. Uh, briefly, we could just see here some of our deadlines that are on the left-hand side of the page, uh, as well as some of the things that we look at in the admissions process. I want to highlight that we are uh, still test optional through next year, so um, and we truly mean optional. Um, but I'm happy to answer any additional questions through the Q&A, and I'll also give you my email through the chat. But thank you so much for listening as I share more about WashU. And at this time, I'm going to pass it back over to our facilitator. Thank you so much. 
Our next presenter is from American University. Good evening, everyone. My name is Christina Castellon. I'm an assistant director of admission at American University. I work with students primarily from Northern California. So American University is a mid-sized private institution located in Washington, DC. As you can tell from the map, we are in the northwestmost part of the district, about four miles from the White House, the National Mall, all the monuments and museums. So it's really the best of both worlds because we have everything to offer in terms of access to DC, internships, research opportunities, but we have a very traditional college campus given that we're in a more suburban neighborhood of DC. So it's really great for students looking for both um, a campus community, but being in a major metropolitan city. And because we are not in downtown DC and we wanna make sure students have access to everything DC has to offer, Something unique about AU students is we give everyone an unlimited pass to use on the public transportation system. So DC's Metro Trains and bus system, which will get you all throughout DC, parts of Northern Virginia, parts of Maryland. So students um, do not have to pay every time that they need to go to an internship, go to a museum, try a new restaurant. And we are currently the only school in DC that offers that to its students. We're really proud to uh, make DC very accessible to AU students. So as I mentioned, we are considered mid-sized. We have about 8,500 undergraduates and about 5,700 graduate and law students. I like to point out that we are a predominantly undergraduate institution. So our undergraduate students are the primary focus of the campus and teaching community. So for students who have a desire to work with their faculty members as teaching assistants or research assistants, those opportunities are ready, readily available because undergraduates are the primary focus of the community. So I think that's really important to highlight. Your average classes at AU will be about 23 students and the student to faculty ratio is 11 to 1. So we're very intentional about making sure our classes are structured in a more seminar and discussion based rather than large lecture halls. We very much encourage students to get to know their peers and their faculty members. And so we're very intentional about keeping those class sizes on the smaller side. 32% of AU students identify as a student of color and we represent all 50 states and 122 countries. And a fun fact is that California is the fifth most represented state from where students come from. So even though we are quite literally on the other side of the country, there's still a strong representation of students from California and the West Coast. We have six undergraduate schools at AU. I obviously don't have time to talk about all of them, but just to highlight a couple of things here. First is the level of academic flexibility that students have. So when you apply to AU, you are simply applying for admission to the university. You do not need to apply into any of these schools or specific majors. So it gives students plenty of time and flexibility to think about what they want to major and to take classes from all these different colleges. We not only allow it, we encourage it. Students can have multiple majors across the different colleges. You can minor across the colleges. We really don't limit the types of courses and from different disciplines that students can take. So we really encourage to explore students to explore multiple areas of interest. Some of our more popular majors on campus are obviously political science since we're in DC, but also international studies, our business administration program, our journalism program. Uh, and most recently, we just opened a brand new hall of science on campus, which will now house our biology, chemistry, uh, neuroscience and environmental studies programs. It's a 125,000 square foot state-of-the-art facility um, that opened this past fall. I haven't even been there since campus has been closed, but really excited um, that our STEM programs are currently the fastest growing uh, set of majors at AU. Beyond the classroom, internships are a huge component of the AU experience. 91% of students complete an internship before they graduate. And most students actually complete uh, multiple internships as an undergraduate student. And this is not because we require it, it's because students really come to DC and AU specifically knowing that they have a lot of support in finding internships. And obviously DC is a great city to be in if you'd like to have an internship. We have a lot of resources, namely our Career Center to help students through that process, whether it's editing your resume, your cover letter, doing a mock interview, going through our semesterly job and internship fair. There's a lot of support that we can offer you to make sure that if you do want to have an internship, we'll help you find one. Study abroad is also very popular. About 70% of our students go abroad. We have 150 total program offerings across 50 different countries. If you go abroad during the fall and spring semesters, your tuition and fees will stay the same. If you receive any type of scholarship or financial aid, 
that money applies in your semester abroad. And ultimately the classes you take would apply to your degree in some capacity. So study abroad is very flexible for all of our students. We offer three admissions deadlines, early decision one, early decision two, and regular decision. We do not offer early action. And one important thing to note of our, our admissions process is that we have been test optional for well over 10 years now. We will continue to be test optional in future admission cycles. Um, so for a very long time, AU has not required students to submit SAT or ACT scores as part of their application. And finally, we have a handful of special academic programs. These are the only programs that require a separate application. But as a reminder, when you apply to AU, you're simply applying to the university as a whole, um, with the exception of these programs that you see on the screen. On the left are our three-year accelerated programs, and on the right are open to any um, undergraduate student applying for admission. And this is our contact information. I will drop it in the chat and happy to talk with you all more if you have additional questions about American University. Now I'll pass it back to our facilitator. Thank you so much. Uh, just as a reminder, please use the Q&A to ask your questions of our presenters. And presenters, please do check that Q&A and answer those questions. Our last, but certainly our not, not our least presenter tonight is from Hobart and William Smith Colleges. Hello and good evening, everyone. My name is Caroline Turco. I am one of the assistant directors of admissions here at Hobart and William Smith. Um, HWS is located right in Geneva, New York, so right at the top of Seneca Lake, which is the largest of all of the Finger Lakes. Uh, we are in between Rochester and Syracuse, so about 45 minutes either direction. Um, so we're not too far from two decently sized cities. Um, we are a small liberal arts college with a little over 2000 students total. Um, HWS was founded as two separate colleges. So Hobart for the men in 1822 and then William Smith for the women in 1908. We now operate under a coordinate college systems. Um, so students share the same campus, faculty, administration, and curriculum, um, but each college maintains its own traditions, dean, student, government, and athletic department. Um, we have all the hallmarks that a traditional liberal arts school would have, such as the small class sizes, um, the opportunities to build relationships with faculty and staff, uh, great study abroad opportunities, but we do have a few unique things about our curriculum. Um, first being that we do not have traditional distribution requirements. Um, we don't feel it's important that students take specific classes such as a math class, but we do require a quantitative reasoning based class. Another example would be that students don't have to take an English class. However, we do require students take a class that meets the goal of communication. Our faculty created an eight goal system at the colleges to make sure students graduate with eight key skills. Um, so students will meet regularly with their advisor over the course of four years here to make sure that they're meeting that eight goal system within the classes that they've selected. Um, these goals include quantitative reasoning, communication, critical thinking, scientific inquiry, artistic process, social inequalities, cultural difference and ethical judgment. The nice thing is that there is only one required class um, during your time at HWS, and that is a freshman seminar. Um, that professor will then become your advisor. The second thing that is pretty unique about the colleges is that we require two areas of focus. So you will either graduate with a double major or a major and a minor. So if you're someone who has multiple areas of interest, we are the perfect place for you because we are going to make you do just that. Why that works is because most of our academic programs are in one of two areas, meaning they are a disciplinary major or they are an interdisciplinary major. Um, the disciplinary majors are what you would expect a small liberal arts college to have. So the history, biology, political science, econ, um, the other half of these are our interdisciplinary majors. Um, some examples of those might be international relations or environmental studies. An average class size at HWS is about 16 students, and we have a 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Um, we offer 45 majors and 68 minors. Some of our popular majors include international relations, political science, sociology, um, environmental studies, and architecture is becoming a more popular major, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> 
As far as graduate programs go, the only master's program we offer is a master's of teaching teachers education program. However, we do have a few joint degree programs for engineering with Columbia and Dartmouth and then a pre law program with Cornell. Um, we also have a ton of great centers on here on campus um, that students will actively participate in that will become great additions to their resume. First, we have our Centennial Center for Leadership. Um, and this is pretty cool because um, they have a program where you can get a leadership certificate and they can stamp it on your transcript once you graduate. Um, another is our Finger Lakes Institute where you will study the science of the Finger Lakes and other great research opportunities. Um, we have our Guerin Center for the Arts, which is a great building on campus that houses opportunities for music, theater, and dance. Um, but the one that I want to touch on a little bit um, in more depth is our Salisbury Career Center, which are, is it's our amazing career services center here at the colleges. Um, they provide a service called the Pathways Program. Um, the Pathways Program is a career development plan that is open to all students where you are guaranteed an internship or a research study. If these aren't paid for, um, then the colleges will provide a stipend, which is awesome. This center is um, so great because our students um, will help with get help with their resumes, do mock job interviews, and so many other key things that are helping our students get jobs after graduation. Here are just some examples of the places that our students are doing internships. And then a few fast facts about the colleges. Um, over 60% of our students will study abroad at some point in their time here. Most of these are faculty led programs offered every semester in most countries around the world. Um, we have 23 varsity sports teams playing D3 in the Liberty League, except for our men's lacrosse team, who is Division I. 90% um, of our student body is receiving some sort of financial aid. Uh, we have great scholarship opportunities, most of which require an interview with one of our counselors. And then lastly, um, here are our dates for our application process. A few things worth noting are that we are free on the Common App and we are test optional. And we are currently open for tours and we hope to see you guys in the near future. Thanks so much. Outstanding. Well, thank you for those great presentations. And at this point, we've got a few moments left. So I would love to um, have everybody share some advice with our students who are with us today. So um, that is, that's the question I'd like to ask. If you could talk to these students as they're starting their college search, what piece of advice would you give them? And we'll go in the same order that you presented. So Sulki, if you wanna start us off and give us a piece of advice, that would be fantastic. Yeah, totally happy to Julie and um, my video cut out. So I had to pop back in. Um, so if you wanna show me on the screen, that's good. If not, that's okay too. Um, but uh, for some reason I can't get my video on. Uh, so I guess just the, the thing I wanna say is um, we are all really aware of, of what a challenging year this was, what an unusual this year this was, and how everything that um, has happened might be affecting you still and, and your admission and financial aid processes. So um, the reason I say that is I just want to encourage the students, uh, don't worry about the things that you couldn't control about the past year. Um, just focus on the things that you can. Um, and just know that admission and financial aid offices will be really responsive um, and will take a really holistic and close look at your applications um, as we typically do, but especially so in an unusual year like this. Excellent, Leah. Yeah, so I'm gonna go back to the basics and this isn't the most exciting answer, but um, check your email. I know that that is going to be really overwhelming. We as colleges own that we send a lot of email. Um, I am in charge of that for our institution. And I, before anything I send it, I say, oh, I'm gonna make sure this is gonna be relevant to you. Um, but that's the best way for us to communicate. And what I will plug is, you know, figure out whatever works for you, whether it's one day a week or organizing, just make sure you do it because um, when it comes down to it, if your application is incomplete or if we need a document for financial aid or some really important things once you actually start applying, that is how we're going to contact you. Um, so please, 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 I know it's a lot, um, but check your email through this process. Absolutely. Hey, Emily, what, what kind of advice do you have? 
All right, I'm gonna mix it up uh, tonight and I'm just gonna comment on the test optional piece because I think most of us will be remaining that way. And I know that's kind of a, a little bit of a stressor for students of do I submit a score or do I not? And um, Sulgi said it in her presentation and it, and it just reminded me to mention that that it really truly is optional and, and keep keep that in mind. We're not, you know, we're not trying to trick you and tell you it's optional and then, you know, give extra points to students that submit test scores. Um, you know, and I feel like I can speak for all schools even though I. I don't know all schools, uh, you know, admission, uh, about what they do behind uh, behind the scenes. But my yeah, that's my advice. If you don't feel good about your SAT scores, it's OK not to submit them. Only submit them if you feel like it would be something that would strengthen um, the picture of who you are. Ellie. Yeah, so uh, mine is going to be a, a bit of what not to do, and that's to not uh, try and Get involved in things just because you think it'll look good to us as call as admissions officers we really want to see the true authentic you and that genuineness is what comes through in the best of applications and so that's what i really charge you to do is to um really be involved in things that speak to you most because that's what's going to shine through in your application so don't get involved in things just disingenuously christina so then we took the poll question in my earlier case studies group and asked what students were most um, nervous about for the college admissions process. Overwhelmingly, students said that they didn't feel like their story was extraordinary and they wouldn't be able to convey their story accurately to admissions officers. So my advice would be to not stress about that. Don't worry. We aren't looking for extraordinary. We don't expect 16 and 17 and 18 year olds to be extraordinary. We genuinely just want to know who you are. So very similarly to what Ellie is recommending, just be yourselves. Don't pick the most extraordinary involvement because you think it looks good. Pursue things that you're genuinely passionate about and just tell us your story, whether it's extraordinary or not. So don't stress about that component, just be yourself. Outstanding, Caroline. Um, just to piggyback off of that answer, I would just um, reiterate, don't stress about this entire process. Um, this is, you know, an exciting time in your guys' lives and you should try to enjoy it as much as possible. You will find a home. Um, so just try and not panic. It will all work out and you will find a home. Well said, everyone. And I know that our students really appreciate not only hearing about your schools, but hearing about the process and, and clearly your passion for what you do is very apparent. So since that brings us to the end, I do want to share one last time um, with everyone that um, when you stop, <laughs> when you stop, when you click out of this session, you will get a four question survey that pops up. If you would just take a few seconds, answer that survey, help us help students who will come after you and take part in these presentations. That would be fantastic. We do have one more block of sessions tonight. So if you want to learn about some more institutions, please uh, join us for that session. And then finally, if there are schools that you missed tonight, or if there are things you want to go back and review from this presentation, recordings will be available. And you can find those at strivescan.com backslash B-A-C-S. Again, thank you for spending some time with us tonight to learn about these colleges and universities. We wish you much luck in your search and have a good night.